Hey, my name is Adam, this is CyberCat Labs, and you're watching how to install Metasploitable 2 on a MacBook with the M1 chip. So to make Metasploitable work on the M1 MacBooks, we'll need a few things. We'll need to install Homebrew, QEMU, and you'll also need to have UTM installed. Let's get started. The first thing we're going to install is Homebrew, which you can see on the screen. We're going to run this remote script to install it, and I'm going to speed up the video so we're not looking at a 7 minute install. So with Homebrew installed, the next thing we're going to install is QEMU. And you're going to do that by typing brew install QEMU. While QEMU is installing, if you don't have UTM already, you can head over to the website and download the application directly. With QEMU installed, navigate to the folder where you extracted the Metasploitable 2 zip file. In this specific folder, we're looking for the Metasploitable VMDK file. Okay, so once we've confirmed that we're working where our target file is located, the next thing we're going to work on is converting the VMDK file over to a QCAL2 file. We're going to do that by typing QEMU-IMG convert-O QCAL2-C the name of our target file, which is metasploitable.vmdk, and the name that we want to name the file on the output. So I'm going to name it metasploitable.m1.qcal2, and then hit enter. At this point, the conversion may take a few minutes to run, so be patient. Okay, if we ls our directory, we can see that the metasploitable m1 file is listed there in a qcal2 format. Okay, let's go ahead and launch UTM and start creating our virtual machine. The first thing we're going to do is go to create a new virtual machine. And we want to select emulate. We're going to select other. And go ahead and skip the ISO boot. Now we can lower the memory. We don't need four gigs of memory, so we're gonna lower this down to 512. And we're going to lower the 64 gigs down to two gigs. And then you can go ahead and click continue here. And here you can name your virtual machine or whatever you want to. So we're gonna go ahead and continue with the same naming scheme I was using earlier. And then select Open VM Settings. All right, at this point, we want to go down to the drives and delete the IDE drive that's listed there. So go ahead and select it, and then just select Delete. Go back to the new drive, and we want to select Import. And then we want to find our metasploitable m1.qcal2 file. And then go ahead and click open. All right, and the other thing I want to do is I don't want this to be able to reach the outside network. I want this locked to my host only. So we're going to switch this to host only under the network mode. And we'll click save. And then let's go ahead and try to run our virtual machine. Oh, uh, okay. At this point, there's a there's an item I realize I forgot to deselect, and that's going to be the UEFI boot. If you have UEFI still enabled, you're going to get that screen. So let's find out where that's at real quick. there where are you system not there there ah there it is uefi boot make sure to disable that or you're going to get the same screen i just had okay so let's go ahead and try to run this again and it should work this time all right that's looking promising All right, there we go. That's what I was looking for. 
And then I'm going to use my Kali machine to pull some information from the Metasploitable machine here in a minute. All right, let's do a quick if config and we have an internal IP. And let's see if my Kali machine can see it. All right, that's looking good. Let's go ahead and run a quick nmap scan on it. That is looking good as well. And then Metasploitable can't talk to outside machines. And let's go ahead and we'll run a real quick Neo fetch just in case some people are doubting whether I'm running on an M1 or not. And there you go. That's how to make Metasploitable 2 run on a MacBook with the M1 chip.